Hey guys, I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in this video series, I'm gonna be teaching you how to create a character. In fact, the one that you see on your very screen. Now, a couple of things to note. The first is that you don't have to follow along with this character exactly. If you have a particular feel that you want to create, or if you uh, don't wanna use the reference image, from my Patreon that will follow along with this course, that is totally fine. I'm gonna be walking you through the basic steps and you can apply that to whatever character you wanna create on your own. The second thing is for this course is you are going to need some type of drawing tablet. You can sculpt with a mouse, but it's a lot harder to sculpt with a mouse than it is to sculpt with a drawing tablet that has pressure sensitivity and everything. So if you don't have a drawing tablet, check out the links in the description below for my recommendations on tablets, including the one that I personally use. So with that said, let's Let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and open up a new Blender file, select the camera and the lamp and delete them. Now we're not gonna delete the normal cube. We're just gonna turn this cube into our character. So change the name to character base. From there, let's go ahead and switch to the front orthographic view by hitting the number one on our numpad. Tab into edit mode, hit Alt M, and then merge at center. What that does is create a single vertice from those eight that we once had for our cube. And that'll be really helpful when we go to actually create our base mesh. From there, what we're gonna do is add in a couple of modifiers. Now you have to add them in this order, otherwise you'll get some weird effects with the mesh that gets generated, but we're gonna add the mirror modifier first, and then we'll add the skin modifier, and then the subdivision surface modifier. Now, if you're not familiar with these modifiers, let me give you a very quick rundown of how they work. The mirror modifier applies one direction of the mesh to another. So right now, by default, it's set to mirror things on one side of the x-axis to the other side, which is great because it means that you only have to set up one side of the model or half of the model, and it will do the rest of the work for you. The skin modifier, uh, basically wraps a skin around the vertices and edges that we create. So what we're going to do for the character is essentially set up a skeleton of sorts using vertices and edges as bones and joints, and it will create mesh around that. And then the subdivision surface modifier smooths that out a bit. Now there's a lot more that you can learn about those modifiers and play around with. That's the very basics for this course that you need to get you started. From here, Let's add in our reference images. So hit Shift A, come down and add in a reference image. Now go ahead, select that reference image from wherever you want. And like I said earlier in the video, if you want to follow along exactly with what I'm doing in this video series, you can find this reference image on your screen at my Patreon for a small $5 support of our channel, uh, which helps us you know, create new content and get new technology and pay our editors and all of that. For that small $5, you get access to all of the character concept art, including this one. But if you wanna get your own character concept art, check out the link in the description to the Fiverr artist who so awesomely created this one, Lauren Katana. Okay, so we've added in this reference image and what we wanna do is set the offset of our reference image to zero zero. And what that's going to do is put the pivot point of the reference image in the bottom left-hand corner. So then we can scale up this reference image, let's say 10 meters, that's probably fine. And we're doing all of that in the object data properties for the image itself. Now, all we have to do is move this and position it so that the vertex that we created with the skin is roughly between the feet, somewhere like that. Now this reference image is not perfectly symmetrical, but that's fine. Just choose a side. And since we have the mirror modifier, if we work on one side, it will mirror to the other. Now we want to duplicate that mesh, right click to leave it in place, look at it from the right hand side and then rotate on the negative 90 Z axis. And the reason we're doing negative 90 is because this was created as a left hand view and eye model on the right hand side. So then we'll hit G Y and position this to line up with our current vertex. All right, and the last thing we wanna do, move this back a little bit on that Y axis, just so it's out of the way. The final things that we want to do to our reference images is change the depth to the back and the side to the front only. And what that's gonna let us do is if we rotate around the model to the back, we're not gonna have to fight with the reference image itself. So we'll do the same thing, the depth of back and the side to be the front. Well, in this case, we wanna do the back because it's going in the negative direction. But if your reference image was a right-hand view instead of a left-hand view, then you would wanna make that the front. So with all of that done, we are ready to actually start creating our skeleton. So select our character base object, tab into edit mode, and then with that single vertex selected, we wanna put that right at the groin area, something like 
that, and that should be okay. Now you notice there's a red dotted line going around that vertex, and that's because that vertex is marked as the root vertex for the skin modifier. And the skin modifier needs a root vertex just to know where to draw out all of the mesh from. So what we're going to do is just pull out a hip joint and then select that vertex again, and then pull out maybe a stomach joint, and then we can put this back as the root vertex. And that will allow it to generate mesh from this point, which is pretty good because you generally, I would say, you want the root vertex to be at the center of gravity for whatever you're creating. Now, building the skeleton is a long and can be a very tedious process. So most of this is going to be a time lapse, but there are a couple of things you should know before I just enter into a time lapse. The first is that as a general rule, you wanna put a vertex everywhere you have a joint. So shoulders, knees, ankles, wrists, the neck like bottom of the neck, top of the neck. And then from there, you wanna consider the edges to be the bones in between them. So if we have a joint for the hip, the next one will come down and be the knee. From there, we get the ankle. And then the second thing you wanna think about is that the base mesh that you are creating should be as perfect to the size as possible. So if the ankle shrinks down a bit, we're gonna to want to shrink the ankle with the skin. Now I shrunk that skin area by hitting Control a. And that's not scaling, but it is readjusting the size of the skin being generated. So if you scale something, it's not, not going to change the size of the mesh. So control A will allow you to resize that skin up or down. So try to line this up as best as you can with the reference image and you'll be good to go. All right, now we do have a gap here. That's okay. We will fix that after we pull this apart in the next video. But for now, just try to get as close as possible. And then I'll come back when we start talking about the feet and the hands because those are slightly different. Now, here's something that uh, I do wanna stop the time-lapse to tell you guys. If you have a situation like this where you pulled up vertices and you extruded them, you want to make sure they are clipped to the center line. But when you turn on clipping for the mirror modifier, it would actually prevent you from pulling off the shoulder or the hip joint. So this is gonna be one of those last things that you do. And I want you to go ahead and select the center line here and pull it towards the center of the x-axis. And that will allow it to snap to the x-axis and then you won't actually be able to pull it away. So keep clipping turned on from this point forward and you'll be good to go. Okay, also now that we have basically created the gist of our character, we want to position everything accurately like before. So make sure you line up your edges and vertices and try to get the flow of the body into a more natural state. Okay, so we have basically created our base mesh as we need it to, and there's one thing that you should make sure that you have before going any further, and that is a single edge loop running around the center of your mesh. If you don't have that, the next video where we rip this thing apart and create each individual piece will be a lot harder because you won't have a solid line to simply select and say, that's the middle of my object. So make sure you have that edge there. If you don't, try to adjust your vertices, either the size of the skin around it or the placement of the vertex to get a better feel for how things should go. Okay, now that we've got that, uh, just maybe some final adjustments here. I don't wanna select that hand. We will adjust the size and placement of our knee and leg vertices from the right hand side. Subdivide this and then maybe make this a little bit fatter. Look at that thigh gap. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and then we'll come down here and create a calf muscle. And there we go. So getting out of x-ray, now we can see we actually do have some thigh muscles and a calf muscle here shaped to form and then a little bit of a curve marking where one is and the other begins. So let's make the foot. Creating these feet is gonna be pretty easy. You extrude off from here, then extrude one out and then one out for the toes and then out to the bottom and back 
here. Now that's not a perfect foot and you can adjust that overall. We are essentially going to delete this when the time comes to model the boots for that video. And we're gonna use this only as a size and placement reference, but um, something to keep in mind for sure. Now we are essentially going to delete uh, this mesh and create something else, but we do want to get a size difference because I find it easier to model boots than it is to sculpt them. So that's what we're going to go ahead and share along. And we could even get that a little bit more uniform if we subdivide that and then shrink in that mesh section right there. That'll probably be just about perfect. So do your best to make sure that your overall feel for your mesh is relatively in your base model. Don't get too fat. It's okay to be a little thin because it's easier to add bulk when you're sculpting than it is to take away bulk when you're sculpting and make it look nice. So don't be afraid of, you know, making your base model a little too thin, but definitely try to prevent it from getting too, too thick in particular areas. And then finally, we have the hand. Now we do have a hand placement over here, so we could move the model, but what we're actually gonna do is hide everything else accept that vertex and then create our hand just hanging down and then we'll rotate everything once it's done now we have here the ankle so to get the angle that i'm looking at right here look at the right hand view by hitting three on your keyboard and then hitting eight to go up at i believe like 15 degree increments and from here go ahead and pull off a vertex for the center of your hand. Now, if you think of your hand as a as what we're creating right now, we have a vertex here for the wrist, we're going to have one for the center, one for each knuckle, and then uh, going all the way across with the fingers. So that's what we're going to create. From this center vertex, pull off a thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky. Now, that looks terrible, and look what's happening to the skin. Well, that's because it's trying to map the mesh to each of those vertices and edges at the same time, but we don't want that. So select the vertex for the center of the hand, come over to the skin modifier and hit mark as loose. From there, if we select the rest of these and hit control A and scale these down, we can see ultimately what that does for us, which is create a kind of flat paddle because it's not trying to create skin using that one vertex right there. So we can reposition that a little bit better maybe to the top of our model let's grab the fingers here and pull off individual fingers now you'd want to be careful because you don't want to create yaoi hands which are basically just a hand with super long fingers so that's not something you want to do uh, but at the same time you don't want to make your hands overly small either so let's go ahead and shrink in that for the wrist give us a little bit better of a wrist transition pull off a thumb vertex, maybe increase, increase the thumb right there. Okay, and let's get out of x-ray and check out the way the skin is forming. Now this is probably pretty good, but we wanna go ahead and let's look at this from the front and then we can line up roughly the length of our finger here, which is probably about there. And then we can position this down here. Okay, and if we keep that length, it's going to turn into a yaoi hand. So we're gonna shrink up those fingers a little bit better and put some curve into them. Now that is probably fine. So we're just gonna move those out so it's generating these a little bit better. And then I'm gonna grab the tips of these and shrink the tips of our fingers down just a tad. And then we can reposition and try to get the lengths correct. All right, and you can play around with the skin modifier. It's not that great. You're gonna end up with some weird artifacting here, but the more that you can like try to adjust and remove that, the easier sculpting these fingers will be at a later point. All right, from here, it's time to add in the default curvature. So take a look at your hand, see how your fingers are kind of falling. You can look at our reference image again. And what we're gonna do is just add in some uh, joints. So I'm gonna grab this index finger here, subdivide that twice, and then change our pivot point to be the active element. And what that's gonna let me do is if I look at this from the front, I can then grab the next knuckle up, rotate that down a bit, and then the next knuckle up, rotate that down, and then rotate the whole finger so that now it's kind of like folded like it would be. Except maybe index fingers don't really go that far. So there's the curvature for our index finger, which is fine. And then we're just gonna repeat that process for the rest of the fingers.
Okay, so that is pretty much it. There's a lot more tweaking that can be done. In fact, I'm not satisfied with this base mesh, so I'm gonna keep tweaking it off camera. But for this video, I'm gonna go ahead and call it done. Now, I wanna encourage you, get your base mesh to be the best possible base mesh that you can. And line up your attributes of your base mesh with the reference material that you're working with. So that way, when we actually get into sculpting in the next couple of videos, you won't have to worry about trying to get the form of your character right you'll just be able to add detail, which is really the fun part of sculpting anyway. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.